What the exchanges have been asking the SEC for for years is permission to increase the charges that they uh, put on investors for the data that people need to trade in today's stock market. At the speed that today's stock market works at, if you don't have the best data, you can't trade in our markets. And the exchanges have been raising the cost of those fees for investors across the country for years. Meaning these are different data streams. And if you pay more, you get a faster stream that gives you more in-depth information? That's right. Well, we have a two-tiered system for data in the United States on our markets. First, public data and then private data which is sold by for-profit exchanges. Now here's the important thing. The exchanges run the public feed, which is kind of letting Barnes & Noble run your library. You wouldn't be too surprised if you showed up at the library and there weren't too many books and that's what we have in the United States today. So in other words, the, the data that is offered publicly for free, you're saying it's, it's not sufficient? Well, what it's, what's clear is that not only is it not sufficient, but it's slow. Now, there have been some improvements made over the last few years since Michael Lewis published his famous book, Flash Boys. But the problem we have is that the exchanges have no incentive to have a good public feed because they make money selling a private one. So why should they make it robust? Is it their responsibility, though? And, and, if, and you said it's for-profit, right? It is the for-profit side of the exchange. They're, they're supposed to try to to maximize profits, right? It, unless there's some monopolistic practices going on, this is what they're supposed to do. Well, that's exactly right. And you can't blame exchanges for trying to make money. And I'm sure Adina will come in soon and explain how hard she's well, been I'm worried, working to make now, I'm worried the SEC can. is going to, you're talking about price controls. You don't like prices going up, so you're going to put on price controls and you're not going to let a private entity decide what it what it's, the information is worth? No, sir. I'm going to make them prove that they're doing it competitively. Did, is everybody going to have to prove that oh, oh, competitively? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you think they're gougers? Do you think that they're, they are deliberately gouging people right now with, with mal uh, in, in, intent? What I think they haven't done is prove that competition rather than their market power is leading to price increases. And what my job is to make sure that American investors only pay competitive prices. You know, people, when they trade people think it's not investors. I think it's Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan. And, and you think about the the, the trading cost for the individual investor, it's just gone down year after year after year after year. And if you look at total profits that exchanges are making, I mean, they got to make it somewhere, don't they? You know, they? man, there is no better way to hide a monopoly rent than inside prices. Is this falling. really monop Now, the, the, the guys on the SEC that are Republicans, the guys and gals that are Republicans, just said that, that there's been a, uh, not enough information provided by the exchanges to show that, it, that, it's, that it's not monopolistic? Is that what you're looking for? Or? Well, let me just say about this. This idea that this is a fight between Goldman and the exchanges makes no sense. And the reason is, it's, there's no free lunch in the stock market. You guys know that. You, you talk about this every day. If the exchanges are charging investors money for data and information and connectivity, at the end of the day, mom and pop pay for that because Goldman Sachs but doesn't give them a break. But mom and pop are paying. It's never been cheaper. It's like complaining about long-distance phone calls now. They're basically yeah, but free. If, if you have yeah, fidelity, great. It is about long-distance phone calls. How'd that turn out? Yeah, if, if you have fidelity and and if you have uh, Charles Schwab and all of these different exchanges paying it, they're saying, or all of these different trading platforms paying it, they say it eventually gets passed on to the consumer. But the argument you're making isn't an argument to not allow them to raise fees. It's almost an argument to not allow these two different streams. Should there be a public and a private data stream? Should you be able to pay your way to better access? These are great questions. And this week at the SEC, we had a roundtable debate where all of the folks, including the exchanges, by the way, came in to tell us what we should do. We got a whole bunch of ideas, and it's continuing today in Washington. And here's my hope, guys. There's a bid and an ask here. There's a conversation between the exchanges and investors in this country to figure out how to do this better. We should all agree yeah. we can do better but than But what's your answer to that question? Yeah, where does it meet where, in the middle? Like, is, there, is it OK to charge $5 but not $10? Is it okay to charge $1,000 but not $100,000? What is the answer? Is this a utility? that needs to be regulated heavily, or is it a for-profit corporation? Well, what, it is, what you have to do, I can't set the proper price. What, what, the mar what should happen is the market should set the price. And the, here's the That's problem. Your, okay. What the exchanges are doing is coming to us and asking again and again to increase prices without proving that it's competition that oh. leads to those fee increases. Yeah. That's their burden.